Good evening, happy Sabbath. Uh, welcome to another uh, episode of Best Days of Noah. We want to welcome you. It's a lovely Sabbath evening. We hope you had a wonderful week and we hope the Lord has blessed you and may the Lord continue to bless you. Tonight, our uh, topic of conversation is uh, hope for the hopeless. We know we are living in a world where people are losing hope. People don't have hope. Times are tough. We have a uh, we have a pandemic. We have all manner of things happening in the society. So it is good that we also share hope with one another to give hope to encourage one another. So before we start, we'll have a word of prayer, and then we will uh, we will start. Can let's bow our head if you are able to, and we will start. Father in heaven, we want to give you thanks for your wonderful mercies, for being with us, Father, throughout the week, for protecting us, and now for being with us, Lord God, as you are. Helping us to give this Bible study, Father. We ask that your Holy Spirit may guide us and that whatever we may say may not be according to our own words, but may be according to your words. But be with us, guide us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we're looking at hope for the hopeless. Now, when God created men, when God created men, men was happy, holy, and fully satisfied. But if we're looking at our condition nowadays, we find that we are unhappy, we are miserable, we don't know what to do with ourselves, and some people are so frustrated with life that they commit suicide. So tonight we'll take a look at why is it that we are the way that we are now, and what can we do to overcome this condition. So to start, we'll go to uh, Genesis chapter 2, verse 25. Genesis chapter 2. Verse 25. And this is what the word of the Lord says. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. They were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. When God created Adam and Eve, they were created holy, happy, and perfect. There was not even a hint of discontent, unhappiness in them. Let's go take a look to see what happened and what, where has all this suffering, all this misery come into the world. Let's take a look at Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. And we'll take a look at verses 1 through 5. As we are looking at our title, tonight is Hope for the Hopeless. And I'll read. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it. Neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God does know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took up the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves apron. As we mentioned, we saw that in the beginning, men was happy, holy, without shame. God created us to be happy. God created us to be holy. God created us to live a life without misery, without suffering, a life of greater joy, 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 and more joy. But we see in Genesis chapter 3, something happened to us. Something tragic happened to our, our human parents, our first parents, and that we are still suffering the consequences now. So what happened? The Bible says that the serpent, which represents the devil, was more subtle than any beast of the field. The devil is the most brilliant creation that God had created. And he fell from heaven. He fell into sin. He fell into misery. Because separation from God equals misery. And there's a saying in English that says, misery loves company. And the devil was seeking company to share his misery with. Do you know anybody like that in your life that is seeking to share their misery with you? Or are you such a person that is seeking to share your misery with somebody else? 
That's what the devil was trying to do. And the devil came to the woman. And he said, did God really say you shall not eat of the tree of the garden of, evil, of good and evil? Now we know that many times somebody will come to you and says, did God really say you shouldn't do this? Did God really say you shouldn't do that? Friends, the key to happiness, the key to hope is to do what God says. The moment you depart from what God says, misery comes as a result. Let's go on. The woman says, God says, we shall not eat of it, eat of it neither shall we touch it, lest he die. What did the serpent say? What did Satan say? And the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. What does that even mean? Ye shall not surely die. For God does know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. You know what the devil says? The devil said, look, man, whatever God says, it's not true. Whatever God is telling you, it is not true. Whatever the word of God says, it is not true. God is trying to kill your happiness. God is trying to destroy your hope. Have you heard that before? That's what the devil says. He says, but if you disobey God, if you do what God says not to do, the devil is saying, you will be happy. He says, you will be as God, knowing good and evil. Have you fallen for that lie? Have you fallen for that lie that if you disobey God, you will be happy? Do you have a boyfriend that tells you, look, if you sleep with me, it will be the best thing ever. We will be in a loving relationship with each other. Do you have somebody else that says that if you lie, you will get a promotion? How many evil things have we done thinking that at the end we will find satisfaction? That's the lie of the devil. The devil says disobey God and you will find happiness. Remember our topic is hope for the hopeless. And the Bible says and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food. We are reading Genesis chapter 3. We are in verse 5. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. You know one of the reasons why temptation is so powerful when it comes to us is the devil is smart. He always show you the good aspect of temptation. The devil comes to you and says, look, man, if you steal this money, look how wonderful it's going to be for you. You're going to be able to buy this, to buy that, to buy this, to buy that. But he never tells you the consequences. He never tells you that you may get shot. He never tells you of the, of, the, of the guilt you will have. He never tells you of the misery and suffering that comes as a result. He hides that. He hides the suffering, but he shows you what you can get from doing the wrong act. And many of us, we are still making that mistake. We are still listening to the devil. And as a result, we are losing hope. As a result, we are becoming hopeless. Let me not get ahead of myself. Let's go to verse 7. Verse 7 says, And the eyes of them both were open. The eyes of them both were open. And they knew that they were naked. Wait a minute, wait a minute. The Bible says when God created men, they were naked, but they were not ashamed. They had no shame. They had no deficiency. They had no thought of being inferior. But now, the devil, the devil says, look, if you disobey God, you're going to be like God. You're going to be great. You're going to be wonderful. Life is going to be a blessing. And the Bible says that they, their eyes of them were open. And they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves apron. They sew fig leaves together and made themselves apron. And that's what we're going to focus on today. God says, don't disobey. The devil says, disobey and you will be successful. The devil says, disobey and you will have happiness in life. The devil says, disobey and you will find love. How many Christians, young Christians, believe that? If they fornicate, if they have sex with a boyfriend or the girlfriend, love is going to blossom. Friends, you cannot have love and disobedience. You cannot disobey God, who is the source of love, thinking that you will find love. Impossible. Impossible. But the devil is convincing us that we can find love by disobeying God. But a lot of times what happened? After we've done this thing, the boyfriend leaves, 
The girlfriend leave, we find ourselves broken. And this nakedness, the Bible is speaking about here in verse 7, Genesis chapter 3, verse 7, the nakedness is the brokenness that we experience. The void that we experience. The misery that we experience. How many of us feel like we are worthless in life? How many of us feel like we are empty and we are seeking for something to cover our emptiness? That's the fig leaves. Many of us are seeking to cover our emptiness with many different things. But so far, we have not yet been successful. I've been there, and I know you've been there too. Now let's take a look at Romans chapter 8, verse 20. As we are looking at into our study, hope for the hopeless. Romans chapter 8, verse 20. Romans, the 8th chapter, we're looking at verse 20. Hope for the hopeless. Now the Bible says, Romans chapter 8, verse 20. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who have subjected the same in hope. I'll read it over again. Romans 8, verse 20. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who who have subjected the same in hope. So what happened? When Adam and Eve sinned, God, in order to save them, subject everything to vanity. What does it mean to vanity? It means nothingness. How many, of, how many, how many times like you, you thought that, you know, if I get a career, I'm going to be happy. If I get a boyfriend, I'm going to be happy. If I get a girlfriend, I'm going to be happy. If I get this money, I'm going to be happy. But yet, as soon as you get it, you are happy for a little bit, and then misery returns. Vanity. But God did that in hope. God subjected all our works to vanity in order so that we may realize our true condition, so that we may realize our nakedness in hope. So see, friends, a lot of times you are happy. The reason why you are not having a lot of difficulties, a lot of disappointments in life, may be God that it is, that is intervening in your life in hope. God is doing, is bringing these things in your life, is, is, is uh, putting these roadblocks in your life in order to save you in hope. God is a loving God. But before God can rescue us, we must first realize our nakedness. Many of us don't know that we are naked because we've been covering ourselves with fig leaves for so long. We've been so busy. We've been so caught up. We have no time to really think about life. But God is willing to help us uncover our nakedness. Let's go further. So how, how much futility did God bring into the creation? How much did the sin of Adam and Eve have affected humanity? Let's go to Ecclesiastes. We go to the book of Ecclesiastes. After Psalm, after the book of Proverbs. We're going to take a look at how much vanity God subjected the creation to so we're looking at chapter 1, Ecclesiastes chapter 1, and we're looking at verses 1 to 3, and then verse 13. The words of the preacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem. Vanity of vanities, save the preacher. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. What profit have a man of all his labor, which he taketh under the sun? Now Solomon, the king, he was the son of David. Solomon was one of the richest kings ever. He was one of the wisest men ever. And here it is saying at the opening of his book, Ecclesiastes, he's saying that vanities of vanities. All is vanity. How much Solomon is saying that's vanity? Everything is vanity. People are killing themselves for vanity. People are stressing themselves for vanity. People are running around doing all kind of stuff, whatever they're doing, seeking happiness, seeking hope, seeking to cover our emptiness, our nakedness in vain. Some people take drugs because the, the, the search is so intense, it's so miserable. They take drugs to cope with the reality that all is vanity. And the Bible says that God did that in hope. God did that in order we may realize our nakedness, in order that we may realize our need of Him. 
so that we may find true hope and true joy. Let's go further. We're looking at Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 13. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 13. I'll, read, I'll start from verse 12. I, the preacher, was king over Israel in Jerusalem. So he was a king. Many of us think that if we had more money, if, if, if we were like Prince William or Prince Charles, we would, we would be happy. That's not necessarily true, friends. We all have a different burden to carry in this life. We all have our own trials and misery. It doesn't matter what, it doesn't matter how much money you have, how much money you don't have. It doesn't matter what station you find yourself in life. As a human being, as a human being, you will find your own share of difficulty. You will find your own, your own share of misery. I, the preacher, was king over Israel in Jerusalem. And I gave my heart to seek and search out my wisdom concerning all things that are done under heaven. The, the sore travel we have God given to the sons of men to exercise therewith. Verse 14. I have seen all the works that are done under the sun, and behold, all is vanity and a vexation of spirit. Solomon is speaking here saying, look, I was king over Jerusalem. I was a king. And I use my wisdom because the Bible says Solomon was one of the wisest men that ever lived. Solomon says, look, I use my wisdom that God gave me. And I search under all the earth to find the meaning of life, to find what is important in life, to find what should I give my soul unto in life. And guess what he found? He found that all is vanity and a vexation of spirit. Solomon was disappointed. He could not find anything on this planet that would satisfy his soul. We won't take a look at much further how much, how much Solomon did in trying to find happiness. I guarantee you're probably going through the same thing right now. You are, you are going to and fro. You are doing all that you can to find happiness. But you can't. You may find temporary happiness, but then deeper depression. All is vanity. Let's go further. Let's take a look at Ecclesiastes chapter 2. As we are speaking about when Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, they, they saw themselves naked. Satan promised, promised them happiness, but they found themselves miserable. And we spoke about how a lot of us, we thinking that by, by doing the things of this world, by chasing after money, by chasing after women, by chasing after men, by chasing after cars, by chasing after whatever it may be, we think that we're going to find happiness, but lo and behold, we find misery. We find our soul more naked. We find our souls more broken. As a matter of fact, uh, statistics, the, the, the richest countries, United States, Western Europe, they have the highest suicide rate. Millionaires kill themselves. Look at Robin Williams, a comedian, a successful, a financially successful comedian. He killed himself. He could not find happiness. And he was an alcoholic. He was, short, he was using the bottle as a way to cope. What are you using today as a way to cope? These things will not bring you happiness, friends. We're looking at hope for the hopeless. So where do we find our hope? But before we go there, let's take a look at Ecclesiastes chapter 2. And we're going to look at verse 1, verses 1 to 11. Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verses 1 to 11. Solomon speaking here. I said in my heart, go to now. I will prove thee with mirth, therefore enjoy pleasure, and behold, this also is vanity. So Solomon was looking for happiness. He said, you know what? I'm going to try to enjoy life. I'm going to, I'm going to YOLO. I'm going to, I'm, going to, I'm going to try to have fun, try to have pleasure. And you know what he said, what he found? That's vanity. That's meaningless. It does not satisfy the soul. It doesn't satisfy you as a person. I said of laughter, it is mad. And of mirth, what does it? Even laughter could not satisfy your soul. Solomon was becoming depressed with life. He said, I sought in my heart to give myself unto wine, yet acquainting my heart with wisdom and to lay hold on folly till I might see what was good for the sons of men, which they should do under the heaven all the days of their life. So Solomon said, you know what? Let me try wine. Let me try liquor. See how that goes. Let me see if liquor will satisfy my soul. I tried pleasure. It didn't work. I tried different type of pleasure. That did not work. Let me try wine. Many of us are trying wine trying to satisfy our soul. But you know what happened? 
We wake up the next day with a hangover. Our condition becomes worse than it was before. No happiness, no joy, still naked, still broken. Solomon continued, verse 4, I made me great works. I builded me house, houses. I planted me vineyards. So Solomon keep going. Now he said, okay, you know, I tried pleasure. That didn't work. I tried wine. That didn't work. So he started building houses. He started doing real estate. He started making houses all over the place. He started be, being a farmer, planting all over the place. Let's see what happened with Solomon. I made me gardens and orchards, and I planted trees in them of all kinds of fruits. Solomon was having a garden like the Garden of Eden. I made me pools of water to water therewith with wood that bringeth forth trees. Beautiful garden. I got me servants and maidens. He got plenty of servants. He got people serving him. How many of us would wish we had people serving us? You can you imagine? In the morning, you lay on the bed, and all you have to do is go like this. And somebody come and serve you. You go like this. Bring me the... The, 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 the apple juice, you go like this, bring me this, you go like this, bring me that. So Solomon had a lot of service. He had servants, he had made it. He didn't have to do a lot. All he has to do is give, give an order, and whatever he wanted is come to him. They, they brought it to him. And I had servants born in my house. Also, I had great possessions of great and small cattle above all that were in Jerusalem before me. So now Solomon says, look, I have money. In the ancient times, having uh, uh, flocks, having cattle, having animals, were, uh, there were a way of, to measure wealth. So Solomon is saying, look, I had great possessions. I had a lot of riches. He was one of the richest men in, exi in existence. And he says, I had more than the people that were before me. I was rich. I was decked out. I gathered me also silver and gold. And the peculiar treasure of kings and of the provinces, I got me men singers and women singers and the delights of the sons of men as musical instruments and that of all sorts. Solomon says, look, I had gold. You think you got gold? I had gold. You think rappers got gold? I had gold. I had silvers. Who knows? Solomon probably had gold teeth. No. That's how much money he had. I had silver, right? He says, I had men singers. Many of us, we're seeking to fulfill our emptiness through music. Solomon says, look, I had music on deck. I had men servants. I had women sir. I had, I had men singers. I had women singers. You think Beyonce can sing? Solomon had all that. As his private singers. So you gotta go, we gotta go on YouTube to watch singers, right? Solomon has singers singing for him in his living room, in his own room. He had his, per he had his personal artists seeking satisfaction in life. He had musical instruments of all sorts, all type of music. So I was great and increased more than all that were before me in Jerusalem. Also, my wisdom remained in me. Solomon was a great man. Many of us are seeking to be great in order to find satisfaction in life. Solomon says, look, I was great. I was great. Verse 10. And whatsoever my eyes desired, I kept not from them. I withheld not my heart from any joy, for my heart rejoiced in all my labor, and this was my portion of all my labor. Solomon says, look, whatever I wanted, I got it. See, many of us want to live like that, but we can't. We don't have the money. We don't have the, the ability. But Solomon is saying, look, whatever my eyes fell on, I wanted it, I got it. Solomon had like a thousand wives. Solomon was filthy rich. Verse 11. Then I look on all the works that my hands had wrought, and on the labor that I had labored to do. So now let's look at it. A lot of us, like, you know, with it, money, women, music, uh, wealth, whatever it is, these things bring happiness, right? And we see, we find out that Solomon had all these things. So let's see what Solomon is going to say. Solomon going to be like, look, I was the happiest person on earth. Let's see if Solomon was the happiest person on earth. Let's take a look at it. Verse 11. Solomon says, on the labor that I had labored to do, and behold, all was vanity and vexation of spirit, and there was no profit under the sun. This is amazing. Solomon says, I had all these things. I had gardens. I had houses. I had men servants. I had women servants. I had men singers. I had women singers. I had people playing all type of music with 
all types of instruments. Whatever I wanted, I got it. If I wanted this donkey, I got it. If I wanted this horse, I got it. In our days, some people were saying, look, if I wanted this Lady Morgini, I got it. If I wanted this Rolls Royce, this uh, P.F. McLaren, I got it. If I wanted this mission in Beverly Hills, I got it. And yet Solomon says that all was vanity. Solomon says that all these things were meaningless. He found no satisfaction in these things. Are you seeking for these things, friends? Do you think that making, getting these things will bring you satisfaction? You know, a lot of us, um, when we hear somebody who's rich or somebody who we say made it, when they say, look, man, this, this success thing is not worth it. All this money is not worth it. And you know what we say? Because we don't have the money. Like, man, he's just saying that. He said, like, but, but me, if I get the money, I'm going to be happy. Or money will bring happiness, but it sure brings whatever. Friends, that's foolishness. It's foolishness. Because these things cannot satisfy your soul. And Solomon learned that the hard way. Solomon says, I have all these things. Yet, all is a vanity. None of these things are vanity. None of these things will satisfy the longing of the soul. Let's go further. Let's look at verses 17 and 18. Let's see what Solomon says. Verses 17 and 18. Let's see, let's see how Solomon feels after he, he worked throughout all his life to achieve these things. Verse 17. Solomon says, Therefore I hated life. What? Solomon hated life. As a result of seeing that everything that he worked for were vanities, Solomon hated life. And he says that, because the work that is wrought under the sun is grievous unto me, for all is vanity and vexation of spirit. No one was more successful than Solomon, and yet Solomon hated life. Because he realized that everything he was doing, it was meaningless. You have all these cars, so what? You can barely drive them. And you're fearful to get robbed. So what? And you're going to die one day anyway. You won't leave all of them behind. But these things brought Solomon to, a, to, to hopelessness. Miserable. Verse 18. And yet I hated all my labor which I had taken under the sun, because I should leave it unto the man that shall be after me. You see what I'm saying? Solomon says, look, all this hard work that I have done, I hated all of it. Why? Because I'm going to die. And when I die, I'm going to leave it behind for somebody else who may not even care. What is it that you are killing yourself with today. What is it that is making you even more hopeless than you were before? What kind of a fig leaf are you trying to cover your nakedness with? It's not gonna work. It's gonna make you lose hope even more. We are trying to give you real hope. Not the hope that the world offers, not the fig leaves that the world offers say, look, get this and you will be satisfied. Or buy it like the advertiser, uh, advertisers be saying, get this product and you will be happy. Get this, drink this beer, and you will be happy. Get this career, and you will be happy. That's not true. That's not true. You may be happy for a little bit. You never watch, like, you know, uh, when I used to watch sports, when your team win, oh, you're excited. But the next game coming up, you ain't, you're anxious to get in a lose. You are disappointed. You're excited for a moment, but then you come back to reality. These things, these things don't fulfill the soul. So let's, let's go further. In the Bible, there's a story of the prodigal son. He was at his father's house, like Adam and Eve. But he wasn't satisfied. He said, you know, look, man, at my father's house, I'm not satisfied. I got to go out there into the world to find satisfaction. He says, Father, give me half of the inheritance. Give me what you owe me, Father, and I will leave this place. His father said, okay, son, here's your, here's your inheritance. He left and he went into a far country. Many of us are, have gone and are going into a far country. And when he went into the far, into the far country, he had many friends. He had party. He enjoyed himself. You know, you know when, when times are good, your friends are around. But then he wasted his money with what the Bible says, riotous living. He wasted his substances with living the high life, with living the YOLO life. And he had nothing. When he had nothing, all his friends 
left them hopeless. All this brings nothing. And the Bible says that a citizen of that country hired him, but he was taking care of pigs. And he wished that he could eat what the pigs ate, but nobody would let him have it. This is what happened when we are trying to find satisfaction in life away from God. This is what happened when we buy into the lies of the devil. When the devil says, look, go have this boyfriend, go have this girlfriend, go have this money, go have this, and you will be satisfied. Eventually, we are left hopeless in the pig pen. Eventually, we are left miserable with our friends. How many of you guys spent sleepless night crying because of your broken heart, because of what life has done to you? Because you thought that I could find happiness, but yet you find yourself betrayed. Hope for the hopeless. Satan promise, promises hope, but he delivers hopelessness. So, where is it? Where can I find hope for my soul? Where can you find hope for your soul? Friends? Let's take a look at Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Life is hard. And because life is hard, we want to make sure we, we're getting our advice from the right person. We want to make sure that we, we are following the right path to life. We don't want to follow whichever way that leads us to even more deeper hopelessness. Matthew 11, we're taking a look at verse 28. Matthew 11, verse 28. Jesus speaking here. He says, Come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come unto me, all ye that are lazy, that, that, that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Remember what Solomon says? Solomon says he looked at all his labors. He looked at all his hard work, and he was vanity. But Jesus here is saying that come unto me, all ye that are that are heavy labor, all ye that are seeking to find satisfaction in things of this world, all ye that are killing yourself, all of you that are wasting your life in trying to find hope when there is no hope, in trying to find peace when there is no peace. Jesus is saying, come to me. It's never too late. It doesn't matter how much you have been through. It doesn't matter how much suffering you've been through. Jesus is saying tonight, come to me and I will give you rest. I will give you true satisfaction. I will give you satisfaction at the deepest level. I will satisfy your soul. I will heal your brokenness. I will, I will fill your emptiness. I will clothe your nakedness. Jesus is saying, come unto me and I will give you rest. Are you looking for rest today, friend? Are you looking for satisfaction of your soul today, friend? Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. You know why people are depressed and they have anxiety? People have mental illness. People have all manner of stuff because people are looking for satisfaction in anything and everything. But the, but the only person who can give true satisfaction, Jesus Christ. People become anxious. People become uh, 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 stressed. And these things cause ailment. These things come mental illness. But today, friends, you don't have to waste your time. Like Solomon, he wasted his time seeking satisfaction with other satisfaction. And Jesus is saying, I am the satisfaction you are seeking. Do you trust that, friends? Do you trust that Jesus is able to satisfy your soul? Or do you think that you need something else to satisfy your soul? Many Christians even, they think that Jesus cannot satisfy my soul. Because I cannot see Jesus, he can't satisfy me. Because I can see your girlfriend, she can satisfy me. Because I can see your boyfriend, they can satisfy me. And they are going from boyfriends to boyfriend to boyfriend, never finding satisfaction. Girlfriend to girlfriend to girlfriend, never find uh, satisfaction. Jesus created you. God created you. Who can give you satisfaction but God? We have an emptiness. We have a void in our heart that is so big that only God can fill. It doesn't matter how much things, you can put the whole world into your heart and you will not be satisfied. For Jesus says, what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? What shall a man give 
in exchange for his soul. What shall it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Nothing. Nothing. Donald Trump has a lot of money. Is he happy? Is he happy? Look, look at the rappers, Little Wayne. They have a lot of money. Are they happy? They are taking drugs. They are taking drugs too cold. They're not happy. Look at the movie stars. Are they happy? Look at their lifestyle. Divorces left and right, uh, rehab, in and out. They're not happy. But yet they will not come to Jesus, who, who alone can bring happiness. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Jesus is saying, look, you are working so hard in the world to find happiness. I can give you happiness without all this burden. Because my yoke is easy. Following me, I will carry the burden for you. You will find a source of refuge that will never forsake you. Your boyfriend may leave you with a heartbreak. Your girlfriend may leave you with a heartbreak. They play you. They say, look, I'm going to be here for you forever. And then boom, they leave. Jesus will always be here. Jesus is the friend that is closer than the brother. Jesus want to be one with you. He want to give you that inner peace, that inner joy, that even when the world is going crazy, everybody's going crazy, everybody's depressed, everybody's angry, everybody's losing their mind, you still have peace because you have Jesus Christ. Your nakedness is clothed. Friend, won't you come to Jesus? Our last verse for today is found in Revelation verses, Revelation chapter two. Chapter 3, hope for the hopeless. Revelation chapter 3, we're looking at verses 15 through 18. Are you looking for hope tonight? Have life beaten you down? Are you depressed? Are you anxious? Are you suffering mental anguish? Are you suffering mental illness? Whatever it is, are you frustrated? Are you miserable? Jesus is the solution. He's willing to give you the peace that you're looking for. He's, he's willing to give you the, the comfort that you're looking for. He's willing to clothe you. Are you willing? Are you willing? Don't wait until it's too late. Revelation 3 verses 15 through 18. Jesus speaking here. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot, I would that thou were cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing. Many of us are saying that. Many of us are saying that I'm good, man. I'm good. Look, I got, I got, I got, I got cars. I got health. I got this. I got that. I'm good. I don't need Jesus. Many of us are saying, I am rich, and I'm increased with good, and have need of nothing. I don't need Jesus in my life, man. Jesus is not going to do anything for me. I have all that I need. But you know what Jesus says? He says, and knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. That's our condition. Miserable, poor, blind, wretched, and naked. That's your condition, friends, when Jesus is not in your life. You may think you have what you need. You may think what you need is money. You may think what you need is a bed. You may think what you need is a career. You may think what you need is this and that. But if you don't have Jesus, you will remain miserable and hopeless. But you don't have to. You can find hope today. All the Lord that are hopeless, you can find satisfaction for your soul today. Verse 18. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire. That thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. Jesus is counseling us tonight how we can find hope. Jesus is telling us the secret to a happy life. Jesus is telling us the secret to be at peace when the world is going crazy. We have the coronavirus. People are going crazy. People are losing their mind. People are fearful. People are anxious. People are angry. But you don't have to. 
And the only way you will not be swept away with all these uh, emotion, with all these anger, with all this anxiety, with all this stress, is by taking Jesus' counsel. And by of him, go try to defy it. You want to be rich? Jesus is offering true riches. Go try to defy it. Faith. The greatest riches, the greatest riches is faith in Christ, faith in God. Faith in God will carry you through all difficulties in life. Faith in God will carry you no matter what's, what comes at you in life. Because you will know that Jesus is with you. And as long as he's with me, I shall not be afraid. White rain. Remember when we started? We found out that when we listen to the devil, when we listen to Satan, we become naked. Our soul become naked. We suffer with the nakedness of soul. But tonight, Jesus is telling you that he is willing to give you white remnant so that the nakedness may not appear. So that you may find an inner satisfaction for your soul. White remnant. That thou mayest be clothed. And that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thy eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see. Many of us, we feel worthless. We feel like we are nobodies. We feel like everybody else is better than us. We feel like if only I could get this, I will become somebody. If only I could get this degree, I will become somebody. If only I could, I, I could get this car, people will respect me. Friends, you don't have to keep chasing other people's approval anymore. You don't have to keep chasing these things. All you need to do is come to Jesus and he will make you somebody. Because in Jesus, you are somebody. You don't have to waste your time. Look, no matter how much money you have, somebody will have more money than you. You don't have to waste your time. You don't have to wish, oh, I wish I was white. I wish I was black. You don't have to be content with who you are. In Christ, you are good. In Christ, you will be fulfilled. In Christ, you will find satisfaction for your soul. If you are looking for hope, this is the secret for hope. Jesus Christ. Nowhere else will you find hope but in Jesus Christ. So, friend, today, I'm counseling you. No matter what you're going through, there is hope. No matter how fearful the future look, there is hope. No matter how difficult the path look, there is hope. No matter how stressed out life is making you. There is hope. But that hope is not found in anybody else. That hope is not found in the government. That hope is not found in, in, in Joe Biden. That hope is not found in, in, in Donald Trump. That hope is not found in, in Nancy Pelosi. It's not found in, in the stimulus package. That hope is only found in Jesus. Will you see Jesus today? Will you see Jesus so that he may clothe you of your nakedness? Will you see Jesus so that he will, be, he will satisfy your soul today? That's my prayer for today, friends. Seek the Lord Jesus, and you will be fulfilled. Seek the Lord Jesus, and you will find satisfaction. Seek the Lord Jesus, and you will find life, and find life more abundantly. Let us have a word of prayer as we close. Father in heaven, we want to give you thanks, Lord God, that you have, left, you have not left us alone. We want to give you things that you have not left us without hope. In the world that is without hope, in the world that is going down towards destruction, in the world where people are taking drugs in order to cope in daily living, in the world where people are doing all manner of things to keep themselves distracted so that they don't face the misery, the reality of their condition, of their emptiness, you have given us hope. You, have tell, you, you tell us that if we come to you, you will give us rest for our souls. This is coming to you, all you that are laboring in, in, in heavy laden. All you that are laboring in heavy laden, you will give us rest. Lord, tonight we are coming unto you, Father. We are praying for those that are watching the feed that you may have compassion on them, that you may help them, Father, that you may give them peace, that you may give them rest, Lord God. Lord, help us to come to you. For, for only in you we can find satisfaction for our souls. For only in you we can find healing for our souls. The therapist cannot help. They may help us to cope, but they can never give us the satisfaction. Oh, Lord, have mercy upon us. Forgive us of our sins. Help us, Father. Be with us. Guide us. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Have a good night. Blessed Sabbath.
We'll see you next Friday. Same time, God willing.